so now in the inductance you know that there is a coil this is the coil <coughs> this is terminal a and this is terminal b so this is the coil whose length is let's say l l is the length of the coil you know that when the current is flowing in the coil as a resultant it will generate a magnetic field so this magnetic field is produced in the same coil in the previous lecture what we have seen that this is the coil this is the single coil and this is the magnet we say that this is a north pole and south pole when the magnetic line of force passes through the coil as a resultant the current will flow in the coil and we call this current is the induced current because this flux is not a constant flux this is rate of change of flux so this rate of change of flux passes through a coil will induce the current in the coil and we call this as a induced emf and this is explained by the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction this current i is produced here so we may say that this current i is maybe clockwise maybe anti clockwise this current which induced current is produced its own magnetic field because now you know that according to the ampere's law when the current is flowing in the wire it generates its own magnetic field grip the wire in the hand this thumb pointing the direction of the current and these third fingers indicates the magnetic field so as a resultant the current is produced the magnetic field is produced by this induced current now we have to look at that that magnetic field is opposed to the cause producing it and it was explained by the lenz law these are all things which we have discussed in our previous lectures so it means this emf e is equal to minus n d phi over dt so here this negative sign shows that the emf produced is opposes the cause producing it because this emf produces its own magnetic field and this magnetic field produced by this current is opposite to this magnetic field its magnetic field is in this direction so external is this produced by the uh, current is this so they will oppose each other this negative sign shows that opposition and it was explained by the lens and we call it as a lens law so now we have to look at that this emf is produced in the coil the emf is directly proportional to the to the rate of change of current rate of change of current in the coil so emf e is equal to minus di over dt proportional so emf is equal to minus proportional t is replaced by some constant which we call it as a di over dt so here emf is the emf e is equal to potential difference between two terminals this emf is measured when you connect the voltage through this so it is emf is the potential difference between two terminals b into a so which we call it as a potential difference also so this is equal to minus l di over dt so l 
is equal to this L is equal to minus E divided by DI over DG or this L is known as inductance. This L is known as inductance. Here this inductance L is defined as a, its unit is Henry. How to define one Henry here? One Henry is equal to, it means if the potential difference of one volt is produced due to the rate of change of one ampere current per second. So here it can be written as one volt into second divided by ampere. So Henry is equal to this. So Henry is the unit of the inductance. So this is known as the inductance. This rate of change of flux, this rate of change of uh, inductance So now calculating the inductance. That EMF is equal to minus in B phi over DT. You know that EMF is equal to number of turns into rate of change of flux through each turn. EMF is equal to minus L B I over D T. It means this is the EMF in terms of the magnetic flux passes through it. This is the EMF in terms of the current of change of current flowing through it. In the flux, the flux is passing through each turn and the current has a, mag has a inductance here, constant inductance. So if we compare both equation, we get So if we compare both equations, we get minus n b phi over dt is equal to minus l b i over dt. Minus minus cancel dt dt cancel derivative. So n phi is equal to l i. So L is equal to N phi over I current. So this is another relation for the inductance. This is the inductance relation. So in the case of solenoid, you know that solenoid is a simple coil. In the case of solenoid, this is the solenoid, a simple coil in the straight direction whose length is L is known as a solenoid. And you know that the magnetic field produced by the solenoid, in our previous lecture we have seen that the magnetic field, because you know that when the current is flowing in each turn, it generates a magnetic field around it. And this magnetic field B produced by the solenoid is equal to the magnetic field due to solenoid B is equal to mu naught N R. Mu naught N R and n is known as the number of turns per unit length. This n is the number of turns per unit length. 
so which we call it as a n upon n so therefore n is equal to by cross multiplication n into n so here n is equal to n into n so now the n put this value in equation number let's say let's say this we call equation number 1 This is equation number two, and this is equation number three. Put this value in equation number two. Put this value in equation number two. We get. We get. n is equal to n phi n is replaced by n n phi upon r this is the n this is the inductors so now again Here, n is equal to n l phi upon r, which means n is the number of turns in a length, phi is the flux. How to define a magnetic flux? Magnetic flux is defined as the magnetic line of force per unit area. So this equation can be rewritten as an n l upon current. Into this is equal to b into a. A is the area. Or this b into a, or b, the magnetic field is equal to mu is equal to this. B is equal to mu naught n r. So this can be rewritten as n l over r. This b is equal to mu naught n r into this a. This i I cancel. N n gives you n square. So this is equal to mu naught n square l into a. This is the inductance. If we divide l over there, l upon l is equal to mu naught. n square a this is known as the inductance per unit length so this is known as a inductance per unit length this is known as inductance per unit length So now, l upon l is equal to mu dot n square a. This equation indicates that the inductance per unit length, depending upon mu dot, which is a constant term, depending upon the mu naught n square a so this l upon a is equal to mu dot n square a so it means this inductance per unit length is directly proportional to the mu naught which is the constant n square which is the constant a is the area which is the constant so it means this whole things area into length is the geometry of the coil this is the coil and 
A is the area of the coil, L is the length of the coils. So as a general, we call it as a term geometry of the coil. So this concludes that the inductance is not depending upon the current or magnetic field. The inductance of the coil, or we may call it as a self-inductance of the coil, is directly depends upon the geometry of the coil. It means area of the coil, length of the coil, size of the coil. As a general, we call a term geometry of the coil. This equation shows that this equation tells us that the inductance inductance is depending on the geometry of the coil inductance depending on the geometry of the coil coil ki geometry pe depend karta hai this is known as a self inductance or we call it as a inductance term so now there is another term, uh, application which we call it as the application of the toroid this is the solenoid so this is the inductance of the solenoid this is the inductance of the solenoid because you you have seen two application one is this geometry is known as a solenoid this is called the solenoid is shape of the coil is called the solenoid and this shape if we have a circle like that and the winding over the circle this this is known as a toroid this is called the toroid and this is called the solenoid so now we have to look at okay, what is the inductance of this toroid so we have to look now another application which is the inductance of the toroid so here if we look here this is the toroid this geometry its inner radius of the circle is a outer radius is b and these are the different windings on this we call this shape is the toroid and the magnetic field produced by the toroid is inside which is equal to b is equal to mu not n i upon 2 pi r you know that this what we have done in our previous lectures when we were discussing the magnetic field produced by the current carrying wire 
and these are the two applications of the ampere's law this what we have discussed in the ampere's law the magnetic field produced by the solenoid magnetic field produced by the toroid so now here the same figure if we take a cross sectional view of this figure so this is the half circle let's say so here this is its a thickness or we call it as a h height this is the radius inner radius a and this is the outer radius b so this is the outer radius b and this is the inner radius a this may be any distance let's say we say take a small portion here we said this is the small portion let's say this is equal to d r because the total length is from a to b this is a and this is b the total length is from a to b here and this there is a uh, windings on the coil here we have a windings on the coil so here the magnetic field produced inside it we have to look at if what is the inductance here in the case of toroid it means in the previous case we have seen that the, there is a solenoid a straight coil so now the coil becomes a circular so when the coil becomes circular what we shape call ship this shape is the toroid and now we have to look at what is the inductance due to this toroid so here you know that okay, the inductance due to the toroid is equal to this n is equal to mu naught we have a formula for the inductance is equal to n is equal to n phi upon r this what we have seen in our pre in our previous topic that the inductance is equal to n phi over r or you may write write it again emf is equal to minus n di over dt emf is equal to minus n d phi over dt compare compare you will get n dr over dt is equal to n d phi over dt so n into r is equal to n into phi because this will cancel so n is equal to n phi over r this phi is the magnetic flux phi is the magnetic flux which we call it as a phi is the magnetic line of force passing through a unit area this is the magnetic flux this phi is the magnetic flux phi which is b into da and a is the area and area is defined as the length into width this is the length this is the width h and the length is from a to b so this phi is varies from a to b this is the mu naught n r upon 2 pi r into h into d r this is the area and this is the b magnetic field produced by the toroid here so now in this case here here this h d r take a del, uh, integral of this this flux phi is equal to this mu not is a constant n is a constant i is a constant 2 pi is a constant h is a constant so the integral over r is equal to log of r because integral of 1 upon r is equal to log of r and its value of the limits is from a to d so here the flux phi is equal to mu not n i h upon 2 pi log of d upon a so this is called the flux substitute this value of flux over here let's say we say this is equation number 1 this is equation 2 this is equation 3 
substitute this value of flux in equation number three, we get this value in equation three, we get, so we get L is equal to N upon I, N upon I phi, phi is equal to mu naught N I H upon 2 pi log B upon A log B upon A here. So here this can be rewrite as I I can say L is equal to N and N square. So this is mu naught N square H log of B upon A divided by 2 pi. Here if we look into this equation, this equation tells us something new. This indicates that the self-inductance of the toroid, oh sorry, the inductance of the toroid here, not a solenoid, but toroid is depending upon the mu naught, which is constant property. N is the number of turns, which is again constant. H is the width of thickness of the coil, which is constant. Log of B upon A is again constant. Inner radius and outer radius 2 pi is also constant. And this whole thing, these and H and etc., these whole things again call tells us that the inductance is again depending upon the geometry of the coil. It means there is no any B term, which is the magnetic field term. There is no any term like a current. So therefore, it indicates that even the magnetic field produced in the toroid whose inductance is totally depending upon the geometry of the coils. So this shows that, this shows that the inductance depends upon the geometry of the coils. TO toroidal coil. So this is what about the induction of the toroid. It means the induction is totally depending upon the geometry of the toroid. So now this is the end of this.